The key standoff in the Middle East between Israel and Iran has been steadily ramping up. Over the last two months, Israel and its allies, primarily the U.S. and Saudi Arabia, have done quite a bit to antagonize Iran and attempt to impair it from achieving its ambitions. Iran's response is coming, and the aim is an asymmetric counterattack that would heavily hamper Israel's interests. Tehran's response will likely be two-pronged. On the one hand, through its proxies and allies, namely the Houthis in Yemen, who are pushing back Saudi Arabia and inflicting heavy losses on it. Iran recently sent advanced suicide drones to Yemen, so Riyadh appears to be in for a surprise. Separately, it's operating through its allies in Iraq and Syria as reports of U.S. convoys suffering explosions are becoming a rather regular occurrence. On the other hand, Iran's nuclear program appears to be developing steadily and the Wall Street Journal is stoking the flames by claiming that Tehran is nearing production of a key material for nuclear warheads. There's been no confirmation of that, but it also works to Iran's benefit and will be used as a mechanism to check if Israel is willing to attack its nuclear program once again after allegedly killing Iran's top nuclear scientist, Mohsen Fakhrizadeh. Tehran is working to produce enriched uranium, which it maintains is for peaceful purposes, and uses this as a lever to pressure the United States and force Israel's hand. Most recently, Iran said that Washington's return to the nuclear deal, as incoming President Joe Biden has signaled, was simply extortion if it's not accompanied by a lifting of sanctions. As such, Iran says not only must Washington want to return, but it also needs to do something to make up for their past failures, namely lift the sanctions the Trump administration imposed. Israel, feeling the urgency of its situation, has warned that if the U.S. were to return to the nuclear deal, it would feel forced to strike the facilities being used in Iran's nuclear program in order to hamper any progress that it may be having towards an alleged weapon. If this really happens, this will easily lead to a large-scale regional war. Currently, Israel and the U.S. have largely played their hands, attacks on various proxy positions as well as various threats and military deployments. For Iran, the field is wide open and it's Tehran's turn to make its move. It is likely to be an asymmetric action not focused on a single point of tension, but rather on several.